Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Evan Better Presents. And uh, sorry I haven't been around much lately. Uh, real life's been very busy. I'm uh, moving into a new house soon, and uh, and there's a lot to do. But anyways, I haven't forgotten about you guys, and I do appreciate all your comments, and I do read them all, so make sure you still keep posting. And uh, hopefully, in the new year, I'll have my new rig, and uh, my new studio will be set up, and uh, everything's going to be good, and I'm going to get into it. But... Don't uh, don't fret. You won't have to wait till January to see new content. Fallout 4 is coming out on the 10th. I'll be playing the hell out of that game, so you guys can expect that for sure. But uh, right now we're in Seven Days to Die. Yes, yes, quite down. You guys know that I love. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't care for the first person shooter genre. I don't I don't care for games where. You know, like CS:GO. That's not me. I don't I don't do that competitive crap. That's not my thing. That was me when I was. Uh, 19 years old, not now. You know, I used to play the hell out of uh, Quake 3 Arena, for example. I was amazing at Quake 3 Arena, but that's not me anymore. Now I like to do games where I have to think. Um, strategy games, building games. Seven Days to Die has got elements of both of those. That's why I keep coming back to this game. Um, this is currently Alpha 12.5. Sorry, Beta 12... No, Alpha, it's still Alpha, yeah. Alpha 12.5, look at that. So this is Alpha 12.5. I haven't gotten back into the game yet. Um, Friendly's server is still up. Thank you to all people who donate to that. So, uh, come Alpha 13, I'm going to get back into this game pretty heavy. I think probably about Alpha 13.1, truth be told, because you know how glitches are. But that's not the point of today's video to talk about the future. Today's video is to show you guys uh, important structures, how to build a good structure. Now, I am kind of giving away a bit of uh, secrets here. <clears throat> this is not exactly something I want to show you guys because this is kind of the ultimate base for zombie and player defense. <clears throat> and uh, it's not something I want to give away, but I feel that uh, knowledge shared is knowledge gained. So I wanted to show you guys this structure. Now, I, I, I still am not 100% sure if I ever did a video of the oil rig. This is a variation on the oil rig. I haven't finished it yet. I've just been building it. More proof of concept again. But the oil rig, the whole idea behind the oil rig was, and that wasn't the first thing we had built in a lake, but to build a, a structure in the water. <clears throat> and we've long exploited the fact that zombies have a hard time with water. They've gotten better as uh, fun pimps have improved their code. But they still are not very good when it comes to dealing with water. So one of the things that is important to build, if you want to build a base that's A, zombie proof, which is nothing, that's the smallest part of the game now, but B, player proof, now, here's where it gets difficult. So, the, the nice thing about building in the water is that water does a couple of nice things. It camouflages what you're building. Two, makes it even more difficult for a player to get near your structure. Because now they have to deal with the water influencing the way they move. And as you can see here, I've got um, con real, um, reinforced concrete blocks making a wall that leads to a pit, which is four wide. One two, three, four. You can see, see the, the neat shadow effect that the water gives it. There we go. You can see the neat shadow effect the water gives it. So that, I think that adds a kind of a cool factor to the way it looks. And underneath, you can see that we've got uh, triple reinforced spikes. Now, this design is going to have problems in Alpha 13 because those spikes are going to start taking damage and will need to be replaced over time as a, you know instead of how they are now where they they last for almost ever um but the the whole design here is based around this this moat now you can make this moat several several blocks wider than this this was just the four is the minimum because then you can't reach across by standing right here excuse me you can't you can't reach across and, and reach that wall that's the whole idea behind the four all right uh in a smarter build you'd probably want to make this this top layer out of steel so that players can't just dig through it and get down. Now, and you can, you can dig through this pretty easily. It's not, not, it's just reinforced concrete. So if you made this top ring about, uh, made out of steel, that would completely prevent players from being able to do that. Um, or, you know, at least it would, it would hinder them. Nothing can be reached here. You can't, uh, crawler zombies can't crawl up this. Crawler zombies can't even get to the wall. Players can't get to the wall. If they step off, they end up, oh, shoot, uh, I could swim out of that. So you know what? Actually, there we go. I just found a flaw. I could probably sit right here in the water. Nope. Oh, and if I wasn't in God mode, I'd be dead. 
So there you go. Make it, you should probably make it five wide. That way there's no chance of them sitting in the water and fooling around like that. But you can, of course, improve that by simply doing something basic like putting spikes around the edge here. So anyways, the, uh, the structure, as you can see here, is built reinforced concrete, but that's just the outside. The, here's the inside. This is the important part. Now, knowing how structural integrity works, and I, I haven't finished the inside here. I was just kind of doing a, a simple design so I could show you guys. But you can see here is a reinforced concrete column. And inside of that column is metal trussing, just like this. All right, so the metal trussing here leads down to four holes. Now, these are all, this, this structure is uh, nine blocks by nine blocks. All right, so you got three, uh, three, and three. So it, it basically, if you just look at it, everything's done in just groups of, uh, in like blocks of, of, uh, of nine. The idea is behind it that we know that the structural integrity of this stuff is eight. Eight with weight on top, right? You can have a span of eight. So you technically, technically could make this, you know, like eight blocks apart basically on each side. So these pillars could be eight blocks apart and the center would still be supported. But I don't know if you really ever, if anyone would ever need a structure that large. Look at the surface area that just these pillars set up the way it works gives us. All right, this would be the main floor um, for, uh, you know, self-defense. You could go up here. This is, I'll set up the windows up here. And uh, this floor here obviously allows you to see very, very far off into the distance. All right, while also giving you a good view of the surrounding. Now, uh, a perfect design would probably have a way to uh, snipe from right here. So I'd build a platform layer like right on this level here so that you could just peek over and pop, pop, pop anybody who's getting around this spot. So there's a there's an improvement that could be made. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously this was just a creative mode de design. How would you get in and out? Well, these, here, let's find the one that's got this cement on it. Uh, this one. All right, so this column here, no, wait, where the hell? is it's right here all right yeah is this right yeah this is right okay <laughs> you can make this uh this tube oh i did it stupidly you don't need to put the reinforced concrete on that side of it you could have just put it right here so the tube is completely protected so that it would be like this there you go so the idea behind this is that you would have a entrance under the ground all right, underground, perhaps in a cave system. This is just Navis gain, so there's no cave systems here. All right, but the idea is that you have a entrance into the base that's underground, and that way, oh, and there's another structure I built over there. You can see that, and this is a little proof concept thing. The idea is that when you're, uh, if someone busts into your underground tunnel, no big deal, right? Who cares? That's why it's nice if it's a cave system, because then they can get lost down there, and then they may never even find the way into your base. But it's all about the wood frame ladder. All right, I've told you guys this a hundred times. Wood frame ladder is the way to do it. So, boom, you'd have a wood frame ladder just like this. This is how you get in and out of your base. <clears throat> All right, and then I'd be up in, up into the into the next level. To get to the next level of the base, which obviously I haven't built, you would have, again, a wood frame ladder. There, now I'm on the second floor. All right, the whole idea behind the wood frame ladder, as I've told you guys in the past, is that when there's land claim blocks down, only the players who own the land claim blocks or in the, are in that friends list can use the wood frame ladder. Nobody else can. So the only way you could break up into this place is if you dug through the walls and you made a staircase or my land claims expired and you can, well, then you'd have to do the same thing. You can build a wood frame ladder, but always build your, um, excuse me, base, because, again, you have to deal with players. Players are the ones who are going to be grooving you. The, the zombies are nothing. The zombies are an annoyance that slow you down. That's all they do. But you don't want to have places for them to... So you're going to cut down the trees around your base. Little... Of course. Well, anyways, the point was... I'm sorry about that, guys. I didn't mean to die during the video. Anyways, the point... I'll finish this up here, then, since I will have to now fly back to where my spot is. <sighs> As I'm flying back, I just came across the hospital. They're pretty cool. There's, uh... 
you know, I had considered building a base in one of these things, but uh, the amount of resources you'd need to secure it is pretty exceptional. It's, uh, they're not, they're definitely not the easiest place to secure. I mean, there's a lot of real estate that you'd have to protect, but if you could build a wall or a moat or something like that around the entire property, this is a pretty badass base. I mean, look at this thing. It's freaking huge, for one. Two, it's in a city, so you've got loot you can get. I don't know. I think that it, for an advanced team, this would be a pretty cool base to lock down. All right, so this is that other structure that I had that you guys could see when I was under the ground. This was just, again, a proof of concept design. <clears throat> this was built more, more around a single pillar. Um, and this was a, a cutaway just for my own design. I, I made a video about it, but I didn't like the way it turned out, so uh, you will never see that video. Again, this was all just about structural integrity and just showing how to build things based around structural integrity. And you can see here that I can hang a lot of reinforced concrete off uh, a metal trussing frame. So if you're going to build a tall structure, guys, make sure that you build metal trussing as the support columns, all right? And you have to remember that it is eight off center that you can keep, or eight off the post that you can keep weight. And this was just to show you that it's eight off post. Oops. There we go. This is just to show you that it's eight off post. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anything beyond that will fall down. The whole point of this to, uh, to show you this is it doesn't matter if the structure above it, and this is important to keep in mind, it doesn't matter if the structure above it is directly on, you know, the right, uh, the same axis, or if it's if it's off a different angle, if it's uh, you know diagonal, if it's up, if it's anything like this, structures have to account for the distance from the center post. All right, and that's what this is trying to show you. <clears throat> But uh, back to what I was saying, is you want to cut down all these trees. Every single one of these trees, this, this mound of crap, you want to get rid of this. The idea behind that is that you don't want places for players to snipe you from. <clears throat> so if you take out all the spots they can hide behind while they can snipe at your building, <clears throat> in the uh, immediate area, you've got clear line of sight on them, and they can't sneak up to your base. Again, this is Nava's gain, so this water is only really one block deep. But in a generated world, this water could be several blocks deep. All right? And that's that's important. So, you know, I think I'm going to call it right here, guys. I think I've shown you, uh, you know, what you can build here. Now, this is the rest of it's up to you. I'm not going to give away all my secrets. Uh, these are enough secrets to give away, I think. But when it comes to building things, just remember, height helps. Height helps. The higher you are up, that means the more distance that somebody has to go to get up. So if you build something on stilts... As long as you protect those stilts, it's effective. Land claim blocks on friendly server, of course, add 10 times durability to every block. So just keep that in mind. Alrighty. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial video. Um, you know, little example of how to build a very secure structure. And uh, look forward to seeing a lot more 7 Days videos in the uh, coming future. And I will see you guys for some Twitch streamed Fallout 4 on November 10th. So thanks very much for watching. Make sure you do leave those comments. I do read all of them and uh, do de generally respond to most of them as well. Leave those likes, favorite, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you all in the next episode of Evan Better Presents. Thank you again.